What is happening everybody? Trey here and once again we are going to be reacting to some Alex G. We are filling up his discography here at the channel. I want to shout out Shane, our uh, big time Alex G fan and a uh, patron who's been taking us through the Alex G journey for suggesting this one as we go up to Alex G's seventh record today, Rocket from 2017. So looking forward to this one man. Just uh, a little bit of quick facts on this. Not a lot on it. Just uh, some of the acclaim that it's got. Uh, Esquire Enemy and Pitchfork all had it uh, at the time of 2017 in their top 50 albums of the year list. And uh, this was released through Domino Recording Company. And I just found a, a couple little snippets from that Pitchfork review, actually, that uh, I just thought uh, were very well written. And uh, hey, man, I'll read them here and then uh, let, we'll, we'll get into it. Um, the, the Pitchfork writer here says, in a sense, singer-songwriter Alex G is the modern ideal for an indie rock throwback. The frequent comparisons with Elliot Smith, one of my favorites, or Sparkle Horse was legitimate, but mostly regarding his recording process. Every production decision, whether double tracking vocals or close miking the guitars, creates the assumption of intimacy, recalling an earlier time when instrumental or monetary limitations necessitated ingenuity. But he records on a laptop rather than a four track, and he was an early example of a songwriter leveraging a strong band camp presence into a deal with a high profile imprint, in his case, Domino. Rocket, a record that first feels oddly uh, soldered together, is in a sense the album that Beach Music, uh, the album that came out before this, also have a full album reaction to that up, wanted to be the most comprehensive and accessible document document of his catalog. So I just uh, thought that summed it up uh, quite nicely and kind of got me ready to um, listen to what we got uh, going in here, man. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. Shane says this is uh, probably the most unique album in the Alex G discography with a lot of folk and country elements to it. He says that I think uh, you'll enjoy it. And um, yeah, man, uh, he also notes it's kind of the opposite of beach music for him. There's less favorite songs, but I think it flows better as a record. Um, my gal, Japanese Breakfast covered of the track Sports Star, love me some Japanese Breakfast, and the great B.B. Bridgers covered Powerful Man. So uh, all that to say, let's just get after it, ladies and gentlemen. Looking forward to this. Um, due to copyright, uh, music won't be up in here on the YouTube video, but check out the Vimeo link down below where you can check out the full video uncut with all the music included. Thanks again to Shane, man. Really enjoy uh, Alex G's music, and uh, I, I expect this to be no different. But uh, let's see what we got, man. We're going to start this album off with Poison Root. And uh, yeah, man, as always, going to have the lyrics pulled up. Let's get it. All right, Poison Root kicking us off here. Already getting a different type of vibe uh, from this song than a lot of Alex G's music, man. Of course, the violin is the most noteworthy uh, kind of musical differentiation than uh, what I'm used to in Alex G's music with, uh, you know, really playing with the layering of the uh, guitars and those textures here. Um, you did get a little bit of that uh, alternative, you know, um, you know off-country folky type of feel to it. Um, his vocal delivery was, uh, again, how you expect, very soft. And uh, as we look at the lyrics, oh, look at the poison root, dig it up from the poison tree, crush it up and boil my tea. Now I know everything, now I know everything. So is he really a poisoning himself here? Um, I know one interpretation said that uh, maybe this is a shrooms out here. That could be a, pot a potential, um, you know, right interpretation too, because now, man, now he knows everything. My, my man Alex, she enlightened. Uh, um, whatever the case may be, I, uh, I thought it was a good good opener, man. It definitely has me intrigued for what we got, and it kind of seamlessly went into uh, our next track right here as we go into Proud, which I see was a single. So, um, man, let's, uh, let's hear what we got. All right, first heart treatment of the record right here, ladies and gentlemen. Proud, bringing it. Um, yet again, instrumentally, I just uh, love this track, man. If it was just a straight-up instrumental, I uh, I would have been fine with that, though the uh, lyrics definitely do pack a punch. Don't get me wrong there, man. Um, uh, the piano use on this, especially uh, as we got to the latter half of the song, was, uh, was again, quite impressive, just mixing with the acoustic guitar and the, um, you know, relaxed voice of Alex G here. We note, uh, he notes in here, I'm so proud of you and everything that you do doesn't matter what they say they ain't worth a dollar and change then he kind of switches here says I wish I could be strong like you wish I had something to prove um, and then we get to that chorus uh, if I sink I don't want to be the one to leave my baby out without no bottle to drink uh, he says uh, I don't want to be the one to leave my baby down without no money in her bank uh, I, I take that maybe in a mental sphere uh, if I sink mentally or um, you know maybe you, you don't want to read too much into it but you just think of ways people sabotage themselves sink into it um, 
so whether that's mental illness, drugs, uh, what, whatever the case may be, um, just squandering away possibly opportunities here. He says that um, he, if he does that, he doesn't want to, you know, leave and hurt others uh, in that process. That's that's kind of what I'm getting on my first listen here. Could be off on that, but. It's a, uh, it's uh, just kind of, kind of what I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, vibing with. He says, "I want to be a fake like you." So then he kind of changes it. I want to walk around with rocks in my shoes. Just want to play the game, big and fat and insane. Um, does and then he says, "Doesn't matter what I said. I'm better off dead." So I think that really is where we kind of get it hit in our face. Where oh man, this is a, uh, this guy's not in a good uh, mental state right here, man. So uh, all that to say, really uh, enjoyed the track. The um, the way it was structured. Uh, did didn't seem like it was five minutes long and uh that's always a compliment man so now we're gonna go to dun, 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 county uh track number three here on the list interesting story about this it tells the story of a kid who was arrested and kept in county jail presumably before he was arrested he swallowed plastic bags of heroin then he swallowed a razor blade in jail which opened the bags in his stomach releasing the heroin which caused him to od and died alex g explained that the story was told to him and knowing that people crave tragedy he understand that people would love the story so let's check this one out all right, County coming in here, man. This is another one that's got to get the heart treatment. I thought the um, the way that the uh, vocals were treated just, again, gave it kind of that signature Alex G. dreamy um, soundscape to it, man. And uh, shout out to uh, Samuel uh, Accioni. Uh, hopefully I didn't butcher his name uh, too much there. Uh, he was on guitar here, man, and uh, he absolutely uh, crushed it. Loved the tone that he was able to, to bring forth there. And, um, you know, just the... Uh, the the overall sound just kind of puts you in a um you know kind of melancholy it, it kind of had that sense of melancholy to it while uh, still remaining quite impressive and um you know uh, pretty much the story is exactly what I said at the start, man. I, I think it's interesting how, uh, you know, how she's able to just build up this imagery. It's like you're right in there in the cell with him. I uh, found it interesting, the opening line, locked up for nothing, stealing or something, you know. This dude just stole um, and uh, it just ruined, you know, ruined and, and took his life, essentially. He, he couldn't uh, uh, bear being uh, in jail here, man. And uh, uh, he notes, normal and quiet. I'm playing poker and he's two cells over. Cops rush the hall. I saw blood on the wall i just thought that was some very vivid imagery that um you know you could just imagine the scene unplaying right there man and uh then i th i thought uh, alex g probably put a little bit of himself into this second line where uh you know see i got some stories hey why don't you write about that into a song maybe your fans will dig that how um you know a lot of fans love to um, just to kind of eat up anything that's a bit morose or uh, kind of glorify, in a sense, um, one, an artist's depression or mental struggles and illness. I mean, we saw that uh, in a huge way with Cobain back in the day, and it hasn't stopped there. Any artist that uh, is known to struggle with some mental health issues, no matter what the field is, um, it seems people in the media and, and fans kind of latch on to that and, uh, in a sense, almost think that that, uh, is how they are uh, able to derive such great art. Um, and, you know, I don't fully agree with that. I do agree that sometimes the, the struggle and the pain can um, maybe push somebody to make good art, but I don't think that that in and of itself uh, makes you a great artist, man. And uh, uh, it seems some people care more about the art than the, the person dealing with the mental illness or struggle or, or tragedy um, in that. So I, I thought that that brought up some good talking points from Alex G here, man. I, uh, I really did enjoy that. And now we're going to go up to the track Bobby, which was another single, and I see the most streamed song on this record here, on Spotify at least, so uh, let's hear what we got. All right, man, Bobby up in here, yet another one I got, probably my favorite track uh, up to this point. I know we're not that far in the record, but I've been impressed with the the songs we've had thus far, man, and this one's no different, uh, definitely leaning in yet again to the violin and that country sound. We had Emily Yacina on a backing vocals who uh, has been on Alex G's music before um, in records previous to this, and I, I think she brings just a very earnest, um, innocent, pure kind of a vocal in the back there. Uh, to kind of uh, uh, play into the story here as he's talking about this Bobby who's a, a metaphor for uh, whatever you might you know want to want to put in there whether it's his uh, kind of depressive nature or um, just a, a bad trait that's uh, affected him in his life and changed him you know it's Bobby's just a friend of mine he's on his back I'm on his mind he wakes me when he goes to work his hands are cold his breath is smoke and then we get into that really kind of sing-songy chorus I leave him for you 
if you want me to kind of introduce to the love interest here. And uh, he reminisces about when they first met, how that made him feel. Um, but then he says, I lost my way. I made my mess. Then uh, every chorus just switches a little. He says, I'd clean it for you if you want me to. Guy obviously wants to change, be better for this gal here. Um, but that's easier said than done, man, whenever you're dealing with uh, just a, um, a a struggle, a uh, something that you can't get off your back, so to speak. And uh, yet again, really love the imagery in this track here. And the violin just uh, always gives that sense to, uh, it's a very versatile instrument here, man. And uh, whenever you're getting a more um, melancholic type of song, it's uh, I think can add. Uh, add a, a bit of an extra uh, emotional punch, if you will. And uh, man, it did that in this song for sure. So uh, great, great way to start the record. And we'll see if we can keep it going on track number five here, which... All right, which bringing it right here, man, a uh, very unique soundscape, uh, especially, I mean, through the whole song, but especially in the, the first half of the track, um, where it, I don't even know how to describe, but uh, it was just like uh, Alex's vocals were almost coming from, from outer space. I thought the percussion was uh, really strong as well. Um, as we go through the lyrics, there's not a lot of them. Dirty old pig, he lost his mind. He walked on the outside. He played dumb. He ate his pride. He walked on the outside. Uh, and then we get that... Uh, uh, you know, kind of backing vocal with that uh, that woman voice here at the end. There's that repetition, that couplet. No matter what you do, the witch burns you. Um, uh, just a, a bit of an ominous song um, uh, towards the end there. Just uh, almost like you can't you can't outrun uh, the witch, so to speak. Whatever you want uh, to say that the witch is in your life, man. Um, but uh, it, you know, not going to be amongst my favorites. But it was intriguing. I will I will admit that, man. I will admit that. And now we're going to go up to an instrumental horse and we're just going to play that right into the next track, Brick. So a little one-two punch here. Let's get it. Wow, what an interesting one-two punch, man. We'll start with Horse, which, uh, you know, very uh, uh, multi-layered and, um, uh, you know, textured. Uh, instrumental here only lasted two minutes man but very uh, dark sounding uh, almost a bit ominous which uh, as we listened to brick that kind of made sense as it led up into it he had a bit of a uh, strings that were distorted in there some people just kind of wailing at the end um you know the synth uh, dropping in quite heavy as well and then brick man just uh gotta be one of the more unique alex g songs out there doesn't it i mean uh it almost gave a, a little bit of the the kind of death grip clipping type of vibes uh speaking of experimental hip-hop uh just with how heavy the um the, the the bass was and uh just loud and just how uh it just washed all over you a bit of an industrial type of sound um which man i just didn't expect alex g to try i can see this being a very polarizing too for me, this was uh, up my alley, man. I, I really dug the uh, scream vocals that Alex G was uh, repping as well. You think I don't, but I always effin do. Every time you tell me something untrue, puts a brick in the wall between me and you. Uh, Roger Waters would be happy with that line right there. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I'm just kind of getting uh, that, that loss of communication, so to speak, that distance that's grown between people. And uh, you could feel the anger, the aggression, the uh, just emotion coming through brick right here. So uh, I I, I can, like I said, I can see this being one of the least favorite Alex G songs for some of his fans, but for me, I uh, really dug it, man, and it's just totally different than anything else we've had on this record uh, up to this point. So, enjoying that, and now we're going to go up to track number eight. As you can see, we have Sports Star. A bit more of an experimental and a different type of Alex G song. Uh, I Starting off, I enjoyed the uh, the piano um, melody, and I thought that uh, some of the instrumentation, the guitar kind of soaring through towards the latter half of the song was good. Uh, gotta say, I was not a fan of this vocal at all, man. Uh, just the way it was manipulated and auto-tuned kind of gave me some like uh, bad sound SoundCloud rapper vibes here, which, uh, man, usually isn't the case with Alex G. Um, maybe he tried to experiment a little bit uh, with his, uh, I know he played on um, a few tracks on Blonde by Frank Ocean. Um, maybe he was trying to channel that in a little bit. Uh, but here, man, yeah, that, that voice just kind of took me out of the track. Um, I would like to hear Japanese Breakfast uh, version of this song, though. I think it would fit uh, her voice quite well. But yeah, for me, this was really the first miss-miss on the record, uh, just on the, the, those vocals there. But hey, man, your mileage
mileage may vary, and that's uh, that's cool. But now we're gonna go up to the next song. Here we have Judge. Um, two and a half minutes. Let's uh, hear what we got. All right, Judge coming in at track number nine here. Getting back on a right uh, track, in my opinion, on the record here. Uh, love the um, love the guitar tones on this one, uh, as you'd expect in a lot of Alex G's work, and um, you know, kind of mixed with the the synth in there. Um, it, it just kind of gave a bit of a, of a relaxing uh, vibe, even though uh, uh, it was a bit darker lyrically too. Um, he kind of processes in that first verse why uh, a relationship maybe went wrong. He says, what drove you away from here? What was dreaming? What was real? And then I thought the uh, the last verse was uh, one of the better ones, a uh, better set of lyrics on this album so far. That day meant nothing to me. A hiccup in my memory. This life will leave you hungry. I am completely guilty. Uh, you know, I'm actually never ashamed to uh, uh, say how uh, how his feelings are, man, to be vulnerable. And, um, you know, I, I respect it, uh, I respect it here on this track for sure, man. Um, so that was a that was a good little jam too. It went pretty quick, and uh, now we're gonna go up to the title track here, our second and uh, final instrumental on this record. We have Rocket. Let's uh, hear what we got. All right, Rocket. Uh, whereas um, our first instrumental horse was, uh, you know, it was a little bit lengthier and uh, more textured and whatnot. This uh, kind of was a a bit more of an upbeat instrumental. Um, a bit more happy, I guess, would be the the, the better word than uh, upbeat, as the the tempo was a uh, um, you know still pretty chilled out. I had the violin coming back into the forefront here, giving a bit of those kind of uh, Americana or uh, you know kind of folky type of roots to the song. Man, uh, pleasant melody, and man, I don't I don't have too much more to add to that. It's interesting that uh, he he made that the uh, the title um, uh, of the, the the title track as well, uh, putting that as an instrumental. Uh, I um, I'm always curious on records you know the title track usually one of the better ones i wouldn't say that about rocket that said still a uh, still a pretty jam right there and now we're going to a uh, song i'm familiar with the only one on here i was familiar with going into i believe uh we have powerful man um and uh yeah man this is a great too i think that shane brought this to us on a live stream at uh, at one point man so uh been a little bit since i heard it so excited to revisit it all right, powerful man. Uh, best song, in my opinion, on the record, at least up to this point. Just the the storytelling is um, is, is you know kind of to the point, um, easy to interpret, and yet uh, there's still layers to it, man. I, I think uh, Alex really uh, uh, tackles masculinity in a uh, great way here, and um, you just uh, all the the various things that uh, people in the world tells you what a man is, and and um, you know just how how to go about that. Uh, that on top uh, again with the uh, um, bulky violin that's in here and um, just a, a fantastic vocal performance by Alex it uh, I think it's one of his best better songs in my opinion man but uh, as we go through we, we introduce a couple different characters we have Davey at the start who's uh, you know gotten into trouble and uh, Alex mentions that hey uh, he's still my friend he says maybe it hurt me bad but a brother is a brother and that is that you know just that uh, that brotherhood that loyalty uh, coming through there and then uh, uh, he shifts gears to his mom, who's been frustrated. Um, he says, uh, I guess I should have more sympathy. I never raised a kid, but I bet I'd do a good job if I did. Uh, I know a lot of people, um, I try to exclude myself in this, because, hey, man, I don't want kids. I, I know that's going to be a tough job, but are like, oh, man, I could be a better parent than this person or that person, and that's one of those jobs that uh, until you uh, actually have one and do it, that uh, you, you probably don't know what you're in for, so to speak, but, hey, that, uh, that idea of, uh, oh, I can tackle anything also very rooted in american uh, masculinity as well and then uh, we kind of switch gears had a dream about a promised land walking around with a big gun in my hand kind of gives that wartime macho uh, nature to it um and then at the end he says i'm going to be a powerful man red blood running down the broken sand of course uh you know the the killing and uh, you know taking taking what's yours type of thing um through war kind of uh coming through uh right there at the end and then uh, we kind of have his voice go to the back he says i couldn't tell you what 
what it means to me. So even mulling all, over all this, Alex she still isn't sure what a quote unquote powerful man is. And uh, man, I think that's a great way to end out the track. And uh, now we only have three songs left. We have Alina coming up here. Uh, let's get to it. Alina bringing it in here and uh, yet again showcasing that there's no subject Alex G is not uh, scared to uh, to talk about and uh, he's talked about um, for my interpretation of this song and I, I see here on Genius a couple others um, here uh, about an eating disorder about bulimia here and he's brought that up before on some of his previous work. Um, we start off almost in that sing-song nature of the days of the week uh, kind of and then uh, just the repetition of the Alina name uh, Alex G sings that in a very a pretty way and then you shift to the verse where we kind of get a little more insight into Alina wiping her lips in the mirror at lunch told teachers uh, felt sick and called mama at once uh, and then she got home and uh, started binge eating cinnamon buns rabbits cats she ate peaches and plums um, so uh, and then we kind of go back to uh, to that repetition of the days of the week right before we got to verse two it's almost like the, the the pretty melody that we had just took a real dark turn just for you know about five Five seconds uh, almost uh, I think cue us into uh, the verse that we were about to hear man so powerful song right here and a uh, pretty instrumental um, I like kind of that dissonance right there with the subject matter and the uh, uh, the music so uh, now we only have two songs left y'all uh, Alex G stuff always goes quick we're up to big fish Let's hear what we got. Big Fish, our penultimate track here, um, and just for my interpretation on it, yet yet again, kind of a a, a more um, relaxing type of uh, song here. And uh, the, we, I think, at the start, he says, "If I could say, I would say. If I could walk away, if I could talk, I would talk. I'd walk around the block. Look the way he walks, and look at how he tucks his shirt. Let me behave in my way. Almost that sense where, uh, and we kind of get that in the chorus where he says, "Don't ask me questions, Pa. You know I'm a big old fish now." Where this guy's kind of growing up, maybe uh, pushing through, trying to push through into adulthood, and yet he doesn't want to act the way he sees maybe some of the others, the others adults act, and maybe a bit rigid, um, you know, tucking in the shirt, and he wants to just kind of live in his own way, and yet still be taken, I think, seriously, and I think that's what a lot of, you know, people coming of age kind of wrestle with, uh, wrestle with that idea of uh, being taken seriously, and yet still uh, being able to be authentic to themselves, and maybe not live uh, in that adult way that uh, the world tells you to. Uh, and then when you kind of bring it to the whole fish metaphor here, you go, uh, he says, uh, give my rod, let, let's cast him off the dock. And then he says, I caught a big fat monkey. Look at him squirming and jumping. Uh, kill it in time to repair. Pull out the bones and the hair. So kind of a different than what uh, you think of on a fish, you know. And, uh, and then he finishes, uh, now comes my favorite part, bubbling in the pot. Um, you know, unique way to end out the, uh, the song right there. Not 100% uh, sure maybe what he's uh, talking about on that regard, but uh, all in all, a, uh, a pleasant tune right here. As we're now going to our final tune, ladies and gentlemen, we got Guilty. And uh, after that, I will uh, give my favorite tracks as well as what Shane's were, and then my overall score to Rocket. All right, Guilty, a great track to end off this record. Uh, yet again, really enjoyed the instrumentation. Um, very uh, kind of uh, bright and cheery uh, melody, especially towards the end there. Um, and yet again, that contrasts well with Alex G's lyrics here. Uh, he asked in that uh, ever so soft uh, Alex G uh, patented delivery. Are you guilty? Are you waiting to be found? Do you think that you'd be be happier with no one else around some some heavy questions coming in right here um he says and then kind of going with this guilty he says will the trial never come baby i've got news but he never says what the news is and then uh we continue to ask some more uh rhetorical questions questions that don't get answered have you buried all the evidence of what you used to be and then uh, has the question become darker than the answer Baby, I've got news, and then it just kind of trails off into our instrumental right there. Um, I, I think that's good, just to kind of ask the ask the questions, man. Uh, do you want to be found? Do you want to be part of a uh, life? Are are you uh, you know living it to your fullest, or uh, are you guilty of uh, something else type of thing? Um, whatever the case may be, whatever Alex G was thinking of here, uh, I thought it worked well, man, and uh, I really did enjoy that one. Great way to end off this record. And now we are going to go to favorite tracks. I'm going to start with. Shane's his favorite songs on this are proud Bobby Brick 
sports star, and powerful man. We share a few of these, Shane. I'll just go from uh, the order they appeared in. I'm, I also have Proud. I, I'm also going to throw in County there and Bobby. I thought that three-track run at the start was just phenomenal. Um, I'm also going to throw in Brick, Powerful Man, and then Guilty here, our closer. Um, those would be my, my favorites here off of first listen. And now my overall score of the record right here. Definitely a lot more um, uh, experimental in, in genres than a lot of Alex G's work here. Obviously, that folk um, kind of an alternative country uh, twang kind of comes up at certain points in the instrumentation here. Love the use of the violin, uh, even the saxophone and Guilty at the end. Um, not as heavy on the uh, guitar textures, but they're still there that patented Alex G sound, which I enjoy. Um, and uh, we, we also had, uh, you know, some synths in here as well. So a lot of different musical styles packed within the 14 tracks right here. Not all of them worked for me, but the majority did, man. So this is another strong effort from Alex G. Uh, I'm going to be around uh, the same uh, overall score that I have been for the last couple records. Um, and I, I might like it just a hair more than uh, beach music. Uh, so I'm going to be at like a seven and a half here on first listen for me. And, um, you know, I could see that going up as I listen to some more of these uh, tracks that uh, I really enjoyed off of First Listen, man. So uh, shout out to Alex G for doing that. And uh, please let me know your favorite tracks down below off of Rocket and your overall score of the record. Where would you place it in uh, relation to the rest of his catalog? If you like the video, be sure to give a big thumbs up. Hit that big red subscribe button. We upload videos every day here at RTTC. And uh, at the end screen, man, there will be a link to uh, our Patreon page if you'd like to support the channel or uh, another video, another Alex she video that uh, you might enjoy but until next time y'all thanks so much for watching happy listening and i will see you